Hello, this is Kate. I'm Wooly Faye. Welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, I am going to demonstrate for you a new stitch that I'm calling the CT Stitch Crochet. It sounds a little complicated, but it's not. It's quite easy if you know how to single crochet. You can do this. All you'll need is a Tunisian hook, but in this tutorial, you can just use a regular crochet hook because we're only going to be chaining 26 or creating a foundation row of 25 you can do it either way okay so once you have your foundation row established you're going to turn your work to the other side your loop is going to be on the right hand if you're right-handed and on the left if you're left-handed you're just going to leave that loop where it is it's going to count as the first loop so you're going to skip this first stitch you're going to insert your hook under both loops of the second stitch so it'll be the second stitch from your hook and you're going to pull up a loop and you're going to leave that one there Then you're going to go to the next and pull up a loop there's three loops on the hook you're going to leave that and you're going to continue to do that for every one of the stitches on your foundation row this is what you call the forward pass and we'll be doing the return pass as soon as we have all of our loops on our hook so go ahead and pull up one loop for each stitch and then we'll continue Okay, if you've drawn up a loop for every one of these, now I had you chain 25 or make a foundation row of 25, so those should fit on your regular crochet hook, but if not, you're going to need a Tunisian if you have more than that. The Tunisian hook for short projects looks like this, and it has a stopper. It's a little bit longer. It can hold all of the stitches that we have in a short project, such as a scarf, but if you want something larger than that, you're going to need one with a cable. It also has a stopper on the end it looks like a regular crochet hook i'll be showing that to you again as we work um, further on in this tutorial so i'm just going to push this up a little bit on this regular crochet hook as again it should fit on there just fine but we're going to push it up just a little bit so that we have enough slack on the end here to go ahead and move we're going to do what we call chaining up on the left hand side the first time now as we move on the way that we change that row will change ever so slightly so you want to be sure and pay attention to that when we get to that point but for this first row for this first forward pass um, which is what this is called again when we pull up these loops we're going to go ahead and pull up a loop and pull through one of those loops that we've just created and that's what you call chaining up on the left hand side then you're going to grab the yarn and come through two loops like that and then grab the yarn again and come through two more and you want to do that real slow move real slow through those don't get in a hurry just relax just enjoy what you're doing okay just take your time doing it so you're just taking the yarn and pulling it through two loops at a time. You notice, I don't want to get it all snagged. Don't want to create a mess. So I'm just pulling through two loops at a time. I'm going real slow, just real careful. If you find that it's not wanting to go through two loops smoothly when you pull through, just kind of work it through like that. You shouldn't have any problem. It should slide right through. In fact, you can go at lightning speed, but you risk making a mistake. And I always believe that when you're doing that return pass, instead of going too fast, see how I dropped that loop on accident? I'm having to pick it back up. And I've even, I've gotten that yarn off. So it's just a good example of why you would just kind of want to slow it down. Take your time with that. There we go. Got it back on. So don't get in too big of a rush. You can whiz right through it, but you're more likely to make mistakes. That can be a headache. You don't want that. So you're just gonna come through there. And that when you get to the end there, of course, you'll just go through the final two loops and then you'll be ready to start again. So let's go ahead now and move on to the next step, which will be regular crochet. 
Okay, so if I was actually work with a Timnesian hook when I did this forward pass and return pass that I just showed you, um, I would actually, at this point, take the Timnesian hook out, and I'd do that by just pulling that up, okay? Pulling that out, and then taking my crochet hooks, inserting it back in, and pulling it down. And I'll probably, like I said, demonstrate that for you in a minute. So you're just going to pull that up a bit so it doesn't slip out. Pull that Tunisian hook out. You could do this one. Okay. You just pull that out. Insert your hook into here. And pull it back. Okay. Now every row kind of has a slightly different rule to it. For example, when you do the forward pass and return pass, you don't chain on the right side. You chain on the left side. Okay. Um, when you do this row, you're going to chain one. And then, for this particular um, pattern, you are going to go up under that edge stitch right here. You're going to pull a loop through, so yarn over and pull up a loop and complete a single crochet. Now you're gonna go under each one of these vertical stitches with a single crochet. You can do that with your regular crochet hook, okay? So you're going to go up under here and just close off those stitches with a single crochet. And these are vertical stitches that you're going under, these vertical loops, okay, right there. I know you can see those, so I'm going to go under each one and do a single crochet. And when you get to the very last one, then what I want you to do is to go up under these side stitches right here, okay? Right there on the side. So go, don't, don't just go up under the front one, okay? Go under the front one and the back one there. Two stitches there. And you're gonna go ahead and just finish off a single crochet. Now you're going to turn your work just a little bit of a look here at how that looks okay this is a really pretty stitch all right so you've closed that off you're going to turn your work over and the rule for this side is that you are going to chain one skip the first stitch so you won't be working into the edge of it like you did on the previous row you're going to move over to the second from your hook insert your hook under both loops and go ahead and do a single crochet in every stitch all the way down. So you insert your hook, pull up the loop, and just complete a single crochet all the way down. So when you get to the very last stitch, then what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and complete a single crochet. And this will be different if you're changing yarn, and I'll show you that in just a moment. You're going to turn the work back over, and now you're going to take the Tunisian hook. Insert it in to that loop 
and then that's going to count as your first stitch on the Tunisian row. So we've done three rows and now we're going to repeat. So you're going under both loops of that next stitch, pull up a loop, under both loops of the next stitch, pull up a loop, under the next stitch, pull up a loop, next stitch, pull up a loop. I've got five loops so far. We want to do that for all 25 stitches. here on the side full stitch on the side you're going to be working actually into the edge of the side and you're not going to be going into just one loop you're going to go up behind both of those this one and this one okay so you're going to insert that Tunisian hook into that right side you're going to pull through you're going to chain one by going into one underneath one of those loops and pulling up a loop Okay, now you're going to come and you're going to go under two, just like you did for your return pass. And remember, since I said before, you're just going to slow that down, slow it down, and go under two stitches at a time. Go through two, go through two, and you're going to do that all the way. Just completed the return pass on your two knees in a row. You did your forward pass and your return pass. That counts as one row. And so now what you're going to do is you're going to remove that hook. Right, see what that is and pick up the other hook. Now I'm going to show you a different type of hook here in a minute that works really well as well. And you can just use that one for the whole thing if you want. And I'll show you that in just a second. Okay, so what you're going to do now is you're going to chain one like I showed you before, okay? You're going to find that edge loop, just the front one, put your hook up under it, draw the loop, and complete a single crochet stitch. Okay. And then once again, you're just going to single crochet under each one of those vertical loops, just like you did before. So when we finish that, I am going to go ahead and complete the back side and then I'm going to show you how to change yarn colors and we're going to do it using the other style of Tunisian hook. So we're going to do that real quick. Gorgeous result gives you a very nice woven look. Okay, and now you don't get any of the curling that you get with Tunisian at all. Okay, and you still get that nice woven look. So this is just really, really pretty. Okay, so then as I told you before, we're going to go back into the side of the stitch again once more into the side. that single crochet stitch bring your work over again to recrap cap we're going to chain one and we're going to move to the second stitch from your hook and do a single crochet stitch into the back all the way across and don't go to don't finish the last stitch because I'm going to show you how to change those colors and we're also going to demonstrate a different type of Tunisian hook. Alright, 
So if you've come to the last stitch on your third row, which should be on the back side of your work, as you can see, then you want to insert your hook like you're going to do your final single crochet, but you are not going to finish that stitch. You're going to pull up a loop and you're going to stop with two loops on your hook. So normally you go ahead and finish that off like that, but instead you're going to leave those two loops. Kind of move this off to the side, um, out of the way, grab your new color. Be sure that your two colors are not crisscrossing or tangled up together. Very important. And leave a generous tail on the new yarn, okay? You want a generous tail on there. Pull that new yarn through to complete that single crochet stitch. You've just changed yarn colors and you're going to turn this work over so then what you want to do is just a little bit of a fiddle here is you want to just pull that tail to the front and pin it down and that will mean that it's not going to slide out while you're working your new stitches in now i've kind of pulled that snug but before i do what i want to do here is just very carefully pull up my stitch insert this other Tunisian hook and this is the different hook that I was going to show you so let's take a look at this hook it's the size of a normal hook it's not long you notice this Tunisian hook is quite long and it's got a stopper on the end of it that's good for scarves and other things like that but if you want a longer um, project you're going to need one with a cable I personally hate cables um, I use them I, I, I love the stitches but I just find the cables to be a bit of a nuisance. But I do use them. They do come in handy. And for some people, they're not bothersome. It's just up to you. But they are excellent for bigger projects. So if you're doing a bigger project, you're probably going to want a Tunisian hook with a cable. It just like a regular hook, like your regular crochet hook. So for this, you could actually do your entire project with the cable. Just try to get a cable that's flexible. This one's a little bit on the stiff side, and I find that a little annoying, but you should be aware of it in case, so you can make you know choices that you think are best for you. So let's go ahead now and um, move to the second stitch, and we're gonna pull up a loop. I'm sorry, that's a little tight. There we go. All right. Um, that's right, all right. And then next stitch, we're gonna pull up another loop. And we're gonna do that all the way down. We're just gonna, like we did before, just pull up our loops. You will not be able to bury this tail, okay? And I can go ahead and pull this tail over to the side for now. We will be burying it in the next row, but for now, but you wanted to pin it to the front so that it didn't try to slide out while you were establishing the new row with a, the new color in your new row so if you had just let that lay in there without holding it down and without putting it to the front it would have started pulling it out it would have been a lot more fiddling a little bit of a mess so hold you know be sure it's long enough just kind of pin it to the front when you're starting go ahead and get your stitches established and you can just lay it off to the side be sure that your colors are separated you don't want them crisscrossing okay so we're going to go here and we're just going to, oh, 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 I'm missing that yarn. There we go. And we're going to pull up a loop for every single stitch, just like we did before. So here I am at the end of the row, going under the two side loops, as I showed you before. I'm pulling that through. I am now going to chain one by going under one loop on the left hand side. And you notice it is pulling inward, but I'm going to, I'll do a few here and straighten it out so you can see that it's actually quite straight. Yep. And remember, slow down on this one. It's wanting to catch a little. This is why you just want to slow down and make sure see that is very straight there. Okay. So while it may look like it's pulling while you're, you're doing your chain one and, and putting it to the side, remember that as long as you keep your stitches count even, you shouldn't have any problems. And I will show you for larger projects another way to ensure that you keep your stitch count right on. So we'll look at that again before we wrap it up, just so that you have all the little tricks and tips that you need to work with this stitch. Oop, there we go. Okay, so I've gotten down here to the end. I have buried this blue tail this second color tail. I'm going to clip that off to get that out of the way 
And then I am going to continue to the last stitch, which I will need to go under both of those loops on the side, okay? So just to show you kind of what, how to mark these before we finish up, one of the things that I do to help is I will actually put a marker right here in the 10th stitch from the right hand side. And what that does, that ensures that you can count and make sure that your next stitches aren't getting off. And that way I don't have to, as long as it's straightened and I'm not losing stitches elsewhere, as long as I'm keeping, you know, making sure that every stitch is, is right, um, I can check and make sure that edge is always consistent. So, you know, I've told you to chain one and go into the edge and this is why. Now you'll see these colors on the side of mine. That's because I'm drawing these up as I go because I'll be switching yarns as I go. And that will be covered after I'm finished with my project. But um, that stitch, that marker is in the 10th stitch because then I can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I know that I haven't gotten off. I know that I'm right on track. You can do the same on the other side if you want to, 10th stitch from the edge to make sure that your stitches are all lining up, or when you get to this point, you can check to make sure that the back stitch is matching up with the front one and there are 10 stitches left. That little marker just keeps everything in check. Okay, so I've done the same thing on this one. I've counted over one, one, two, three, four. And the reason this one's white, if you notice, is that's where I changed my stitch over. And I've, it's kind of, you see that blue's in there, but it it um, it kind of has a white coming up. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right there. So if I go ahead now and I put in my new loops, that out of the way, that's going to be two, just the way I showed you, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and that should line up perfectly with that one, and it does. If you aren't sure that it does, because sometimes it'll pull a little bit till it's established, you can go ahead, put in a couple more just to be sure. I've got 13 here now, all right, so if I go straight up, to that one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It does line up. And then I'll go ahead and do my forward pass and I'll do my return pass. And then when I have finished the entire row with the forward and return pass, then I will move this marker up to the tenth stitch again. Don't move it up until after you've completed your forward and return pass because you want to be sure that all of those stitches line up before you move it up. You don't want to throw it off because you acted prematurely. So anyway, I hope you do like this stitch. It's a beautiful stitch. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you the next time.